Hey everybody, welcome back to D-Zoned. So this is a bit of a special, intimate episode of D-Zoned. So I'm going to be showing off wads that I've made over the years. Now unfortunately, I uh, don't have anywhere near all the ones that I've messed around with. I only have like a select few from the actual, the 90s, that scary time. And uh, yeah, <laughs> hard drive crashes and what have you. What you gonna do, right? But I do have three of them that I do want to show off. One of them, which, uh, you know, might make you laugh a little bit because it's uh, an edit of an id software map. How about we start with that one? Yeah, why not? Now, do we want to do D running? Yeah, I think we want to do D running for this one. So, Doom 2 wad file. Blah. S zone, because of course. Uh, me spelling berserk incorrectly. I just felt like this should have been a Z. Uh, I don't know. Or a Z, if you will. Now, the thing that's funny about this one is I thought, okay, let's, um... Now, one thing that is worth noting is I never even intended to release these. So, um... You know. <laughs> that was the biggest problem I have with a lot of the id, id map edits, is people just edited some things and released them. This one, I just wanted something to, quote, challenge myself when I use cheat modes. Cheat codes, rather. So... It's totally different, guys, I swear. Anyway, this is Berserk. The funny thing about this, keep in mind that uh, at the time, which this would have been mid-90s, I don't know. I think I lost the timestamps for these maps because they all have, like, the same date. It's, like, July of 98. But uh, I know that's not right. But, yeah, I set this up, basically enabled the, uh, or removed the uh, multiplayer flag off the enemy enemies, the items, and I pretty much just said, okay, what's going to be something that's challenging nobody would be able to complete without cheats? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's already funny, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no one could possibly do this without cheats, especially me. But hey, I was young, what can I say? Barely over 10, probably. Alright. Although I will say that the uh, ammo balance is a little bit uh, skewed. But. Oh no! A Revenant! <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess I do want to kind of go out here. I don't know. <laughs> this is, um. Oh, I never. Weirdly enough, I did not. Because in Deathmatch, there's a uh, plasma rifle up here. I don't know why I didn't just enable that. Probably figured the B just having the BFG alone was good enough. <laughs> because why not? Yeah, why didn't I why didn't I include more shells? Holy crap. This is uh I'm gonna say, if I if I could turn back time, I would tell myself that I did a bad job. And this room wasn't changed at all. How lazy is that? I wonder if I changed anything that was in the secret. Uh, oh, I added this dude. Here, give me your chain gun. It'd be really helpful. Thank you. Oh boy, I should've came in here sooner. So look at that, even, even me in the 90s, even I had some level of appreciation for the chain gun. Some. 49 enemies though. And a soul sphere. What? Why? I don't know. I've got a BFG. I don't. I don't need any of that crap. Let's tag this secret, just for good times. Holy crap! Three imps. Imagine if that were three arch files. Wouldn't that be weird? All right. Well, that was berserk .wad with a Z. And yeah, we're in for a quite a ride, aren't we? So let's just go ahead and use the Wadnator, that way we can generate some music. Um, we're gonna do Barrel DM. I actually showed this off a while ago. But, um, this is a very crappy deathmatch map that I made. I actually think this one is newer than the other one. <laughs> Misaligned flats. A rocket launcher, oh my. <laughs> also, it's funny. 
This is called Barrel DM, but these are the only barrels. Also worth noting, the barrels do not respawn in Doom. Oh look, a dark area. I thought there was a weapon in here somewhere. Yeah, there is. Maybe? I thought one side had the... Hmm. Yeah, I'm poking around. I don't feel it. Probably because this is zero darkness. Ah, it's the, it's the age of CRTs. What can I say? Yeah, rocket. Well, these all have friggin' backpacks in them. That's weird. Oh yeah, music's kinda loud from <laughs> when I was recording my three as a crowd video. Due out tomorrow. Oh, there it is, ha <laughs> ha. Oh yeah, me being clever and putting bullets, or uh, shells next to the chain gun and bullets next to the shotgun. Oh, it'll make you have to run around the map. Uh, sure thing. Well, you've seen the map. It's, um... It's playable. <laughs> I don't think there's any missing textures. So, um... There's that. There's that, also. Which, um... Yeah. I should probably... Note. I have noted this before, but... They didn't have, a uh, very... <laughs> much in the way of visual previews and editors at the time. If at all. So yeah, you couldn't actually see the floor textures until you went in-engine. So, I probably didn't even check it until, you know, until after the fact. Well, you know what, whatever. I'll just use the same music and uh, do boxing. This one's even worse. So, um, the intent was to make a boxing arena. Which, um, it's in here. In this improperly made thing with translucent things. Should probably mention that the reason that this even renders this well is just because DSDA Doom, well, and Boom handle things better. In the original engine, this would basically just be a bunch of, like, well, basically just a giant mess. Just 2D fruity effect all over the place. So yeah, this is the boxing arena. No, there's no Berserk packs. That's, that's it. There's just... Normal Fists, it's pretty much a Tyson Deathmatch map, which is the worst idea imaginable. <laughs> yeah. Um, should probably mention that I <laughs> didn't really have any friends that played Doom, so a lot of these things didn't really get tested. It was just like, oh yeah, I can make a Deathmatch map. It's just a normal map with no exit and no monsters, right? Now, there's a little more to it than that, but oh well. That was... Uh, that was horrendous. So let's go ahead and uh, kind of browse around here and see what... Yeah, I guess this would be a nice place to start. Um, so here's the first map I ever made in Doom Builder. This is literally just me testing its capabilities. I don't even know why I'm showing this off. It's more of just for completeness sake. I don't even know why I'm running it through this because it's going to take like five seconds. So yeah. It's a room with a hallway, which darkens, and it goes into another room. That's it. I was just like kind of blown away because I made this, um, I was in college. I just started college not long before this. I think if the file date is correct, which it might be, I would have been in my second semester. And that was one of the things that I did just during, during breaks, like, just in a half hour, 45 minutes I'd have is I would just mess around with Doom Builder because it was fairly new at the time. And yeah, this is the first thing I put together with it. And I was just amazed by the visual modes and the fact that you could just easily align stuff. So I mean, even with this, it's like you could see everything's kind of, well, mostly aligned. I think it's just more because of the room size, but you know. Yeah, test map, very gray. What can I say? Alright, so next one I did, uh, this is another one that I made in college. Actually, this one is newer than this one. So, Space, Space Doom. This one has a bit of a storied past because, uh, Doom Builder wasn't the most stable editor at the time. <laughs> the analyzer just determined this is a deathmatch wad. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. 
So this one shows a bit more, I don't know, there's a bit more effort behind it. You start off in a sort of a shuttlecraft. Uh, other cooperative starts are actually in these uh, seats back here. So player one is the pilot. Sure, I'll just, I'll just shoot these barrels here. Amazing. Health kits. I do remember one thing that I was trying to do. I tried to make it so that there was like a little cubby, like right back here. Just a small door and you'd open it and grab a shotgun. But uh, because of the uh, the way that Doom's Collision works, if you just walked up to it, it would just give you a shotgun. So I just kind of canned that idea. So obviously we've landed wherever we need to land. So let's go ahead and into the teleporter, into the control room. Yeah, the lighting's a bit off, but like I think these shadows should probably be longer, all things considered, but especially since there's a light right here. Angle's wrong too, but in terms of actual visual quality, it's definitely better than anything I'd made up to this point. That being 2004. Yeah. Got here is a hallway with more dead bodies. I don't know, this is kind of... I think I obsessed a little bit too much with adding things into this. I should have just more or less detailed everything and then filled it out later, maybe. I don't know. A little armory here with a bunch of supplies. Then there's another teleporter room, and uh, the whole lore here is that this is where the invasion started. You can see a few demon corpses and then a whole bunch of marine corpses. Control room in there. I mean, obviously. Dead guy. Hallway with uh, okay lighting. Not too bad. Control room with a red key. Secret, I think, right here. Yeah. Drop down that thing and I don't know. Not sure what I was going to put in there, but it probably would have been totally not worth it. Alright, so exit door. And this is one of the things that, uh, well, this was, it's never had anything in it. This is just kind of a. F to be expanded. But the thing that disappointed me, so you got this thing over here with some more kind of casted lighting. I had a control room up here. Doom Builder crashed. Completely ate the WAD file in the process because it happened while saving. And this is the earliest, or I should say the latest backup I had, which was before I did any of this work. And that was like Pretty much an entire like 40 minute session. That was my problem when I was younger. I got discouraged way too easily. Or if I just ran into a single block, I would um just kind of drop things. I still have a nasty tendency to do that now, but it's not nearly as bad. I mean, I could actually make forward progress on things. Oh, another thing to oh, this is Doom Builder camera 32,000. So let's see, uh, what is the next one? Oh right, Assault. Didn't really get much done on this one. Oh yeah, of course, Mission Fucking by Sam Swain. Alright, let's go. Oh, this isn't where this player was supposed to start. Player's supposed to start out here. Look at that, isn't it fancy? Now of course there's a bit of an issue there because, uh, of the way that I did the A. This was one of the discouraging things about this map, because I'm like, well, how do I get this to display correctly? Yeah, it turns out you just have to, I don't know, rethink your approach. Clearly, I wasn't prepared to do that. This one, there's, there's almost nothing to it. It's pretty much just this little bench here. I think you can ride this up and... Did I put blocking line deaths? No, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, so pretty much reception area. And then, um, well, this room's empty. But these are restrooms. Look at that! Toilets! Totally doom cute. Oh, no. Splash. <laughs> so, yeah, another one of those college levels. I use really thick doors here. Hmm. Thick with two C's. Wonder if it was because I was just. Wonder if it was because I was just too lazy to change the grid size. Either way, I definitely, I definitely knew how to light things. Hmm. 
Except that the side of that C is uh, not right. <laughs> Nor is the side of that U. Never mind, I didn't know what I was doing. So, yeah, what's next? What do we have next? I think this map 11 thing, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Because this, uh, this one community I was part of, we were trying to put together a megawad, and like literally nobody <laughs> got anything done with it, so this was what I was working on. So here we go, hopefully it's in the right... Yeah, this looks like the right starting spot. It's a lot of candles, holy shit. Doesn't look terrible. Let's jump in here. Little teleport room. Oh, Doom Cute Wire. Nice. Oh, that actually does go both ways. Neat. Alright. Kind of a general base. Oh, yeah. The little ring. I think this. Yeah, misaligned wall. So, secret area to be uh, filled in later. <laughs> okay, red door. Trapped, of course. Enemies that are pissed off because they're stuck in this closet with a whole bunch of other demons for a long time. I like that little kind of cog. It's pretty neat. Hmm. Righto. I promise there's at least one finished map in this. Oh, that was that's right. So what I was going to do is have it so that with every key that the player grabs, it opens more of these little uh, closets in the side. Just to kind of increase pressure whenever the player would have to go around the central ring. Oh, I thought this was like a non-linear map. Apparently not. Oh, yeah. Waste processing, I guess. Kind of Doom Cute-ish. And if I did this nowadays, I think I'd make the uh, f flow of toxic waste a little bit smaller than the actual pipe. <laughs> Just saying. Alright, so we gotta... Oh, that was loud. For some reason, I don't think those were all separate sectors. Um... Oh, why is... Huh? I guess this is where I ended it. <laughs> is there anything beyond this? Oh, no, there's not. Okay. Although, I think I actually made the exit room. Wait, is there anything in the tunnels here? Aside from pain? No. It's just... Just that. Jeez. Everything is hurt, Floor. Why does everything hurt me? Yes, yeah, so there was no door up here. And there was this inside thing, which... I think would have opened via switch. Okay, yeah. Not bad. So, yeah. Had some decent details. Circle of Death finished! I mean, I guess it's kind of appropriate. The map is kind of like concentric circles. So, sort of fits. So, what next? Oh, yeah, the, me the quote, mega project. So, I was trying to make a Doom 1 megawad. Yeah, that, that didn't go too far, but I do have one complete map to, uh,. Show for it. Should be the one for E1M3. Which is actually a playable map. It's going to be the first playable one we see today. So here we go. E1M1. I don't know why I thought that would launch the game for me. But uh, no. Not how it works. So. Basically just. Generic fancy tech base. I'm not even sure if I completed. Oh. I don't think you're ever supposed to go out here. No I had so it doesn't appear on the map so. I tend to do that, like if uh, something is just meant to be decorative, I make it so it doesn't appear on the auto map, that way the player doesn't get any funny ideas. Yeah, so that's just like, outside Doom Cute. I did try to make this so that it was a bit less, um, I guess, generic tech basey. I mean, you still get your star gray here, but yeah, you know. I guess try to make it look more like just an installation. Okay. Hmm. Do you get to go out there? Kind of looks like maybe. 
I think this one, I, I think this map does have an exit. It just doesn't have any enemies. This little loop. Oh, right. I use that texture that most people don't use. Yeah, yeah secret. And then you can get behind the uh, reception desk. Yeah, very exciting. <laughs> I think I was planning to put like a shotgun back there or something. Something like a, a fairly minor weapon that would be well, better than a pistol. Let's be honest. Oh, texture misalignment. Somebody flogged this guy. Obligatory toxic waste dump site. You know, right behind that nice clean facade. Oh, secret area you can see. Oof, this is a bit raw. <laughs> I like to imagine that I was planning on uh, doing a bit more with this area. <laughs> Drop down here, run across here. And this was just meant to be something. Oh, right. The other secret was here. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Got all three secrets. Isn't that special? Then the exit over here. Seems a little bright, I don't know. Then again, the laptop I had when I was designing some of these maps had a pretty lousy screen, so... Because um, I think I designed most of this during the whole college days thing and then polished it up later. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. But yeah, this one basically just needed... Well, needed tune-up, uh, tweaking and tune-up, that's for sure, but... I mean, all in all, just kind of a short and sweet map one. Probably could have evolved into something greater. I don't know. Anyway, let's go with the one that actually is finished and playable. And I actually had other people test this for me. And they seemed to like it, so, um, I don't know. This is one of those ones where I had it kind of, kind of finished in, like, the mid-2000s, and then finished it up proper, probably in about 2016. So, yeah. Oh. So, you're surrounded by key doors. How exciting. Probably gonna feel fairly easy, although 85 enemies, not too shabby. I wasn't nearly as good at Doom when I created this. Very steely. Okay, red key up there. It's over here. Yeah, I remember one of these switches being trapped and the other one being the correct one. Pretty sure. Ambush flagged pinkies. Oh. It's a trap! There's actually a uh, chain gun in this room here. So, oh, hello there. Just ignore the ignore the noises from the other room. Grab this. Hold on, I'm gonna go back into that room. I actually like the way that pedestal looked. I'm not sure if I did that during the first iteration of this map or the second. Yeah, I like that. Huh. Should have probably made it so that that light protruded down a little bit, but then again, this was before I played Plutonia, so, um... That probably wouldn't have been the closest, or the freshest thing on my mind. These, uh, monster closets probably should have been darker. I don't know, I'm kind of liking this room here. Maybe not so much the, just, solid steel texture. Although, honestly, like, the whole sort of silver, dark gray, blue look kind of digging it. Oh, what'd this do? I don't actually know. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, okay, it activated that. Got it. So that was the mandatory switch. The other one was just kind of the bonus switch. Wow, this is a big old nothing burger encounter, isn't it? <laughs> Alright, well. The room could have definitely used a bit more spice or Maybe some teleport, like a teleport trap after someone picked up the red key. Not horrible. Okay, I'm pretty sure like these walls here open up. Probably after I finish the uh, key door objectives. Also, huh, you know what's funny about this? 
criticize Chris Cly for making a lot of maps like this, where it's just basically a spoke, like a hub and spoke design. Well, <laughs> what can I say? I am a hypocrite. Oh, it's Spectre. Goodbye. Oh, nice ammo. Kind of a weird thing that I was doing there. Just like armor pickups on the one side and health vials on the other. I like this control room. I think it could use some better lighting. Which, granted, a control room would be most likely brightly lit, but I think it could use like some more um, like light casting and stuff like that. Also, tried to make it a little doom cute, like having the bottles of water next to the <laughs> next to the station. Readouts up there. Nice little chairs. I actually like how the chairs came out. They're very simple, just a two sector affair, but yeah. Not bad. Ooh, except for the fact that this side has gray and this side has blue upholstery. Yeah, I should probably correct that at some point if I ever do anything else with this. Bonk the switch. Oh no, it's radioactive. Cue Imagine Dragons here. Oh, hello key acquired. Not booby trapped. This side, I'm pretty sure, is. Oh. No, the secret's booby trapped. Eh, I mean, it's for blue armor. That's <laughs> pretty decent reason, and that's a pretty weak trap. I think I was kind of aiming this towards. Actually, no, this was this is easier than normal Doom. Oh yeah, me playing around with lighting again. Exciting. Oh, yep, there we go. Monster closet's opened. This one should be open too. Yep. Nice. Few resources. Not entirely horrible. Oh, and the maze. So it shows you the prize right away. This maze went through so many iterations. So the required buttons to press are well lit. Each button lowers one bar. It's not too hard to find. Thankfully. This maze used to be so, so much worse. And you also have those other switches, which I will get to those in a moment. If you're considering which slot this is in, that is E1M3, you might have a rough idea of what these other bonus switches do. Yeah, secret level. You know, I might as well just hit this other one here. Where was that? Was it... I think it was... Yeah, it was right here. It opens these gray things. You know what, screw it. Let's go for the main objective for now. Because that was the thing. Before, it was kind of scattered all over the place. You don't even need to hit all of them. I think you only need to hit, like, that middle one. But yeah, before it was... You'd pretty much have to traverse the entire maze. Now you could more or less just find all the th the paths that you need just right from the start room. Yeah, see, like right there. That's really all you need to do. But we're gonna we're gonna go for broke. We're gonna do it all. But yeah, you can see you could more or less see the lit paths just all from the central area. That didn't used to be the case. <laughs> But yeah, you only really need to hunt around for, uh, oh, ow, wasn't paying attention, obviously. You only really need to hunt around if you want to get to the secret exit, or if you want to go and, you know, do these things. Don't remember how many, oh, hello, block map, <laughs> saw those pellets. Alright, yeah, and the specter closets do have uh, some goodies in them. Oh, there's also this guy. Each switch does a different thing. I think it's actually these ones that open up the uh, secret exit. And those lever switches open up the supercharge. All in all, I... Don't really hate this. Although this would be a pain in the ass to UV max. Especially with all the uh, specters kind of floating around. Oh yeah, the computer area map. That never used to be in here either. <laughs> so, um... And again... My general style 
is that I prefer... Oh, nope, still don't have all that. But yeah, I generally prefer to have it so that areas that the player can walk through are viewable on the computer area map. Like, I always... Oh, jeez. Like, when I played Back to Saturn X, it was probably its weakest point was the fact that it basically made the computer area map useless. I don't know. Not really a fan of that style, personally. Your mileage may vary, of course. Not here to dictate anything, just here to share my opinion. So... And... I would say it is a... <laughs> okay, it's a little less stressful when they get caught in there. But just hearing the pinkies roaming around and not knowing exactly where they're coming from or where they are... Yeah, it's a little fun. I think this does somewhat, ow, capture the spirit of some of the, uh, classic Doom maps. Maybe a little too, this might be a little too long, I'm not sure. Yep, there we go, there's the, uh, secret exit. So, yeah, elevator, switch, easy peasy. We've got some more work to do. I also just realized that uh, everything's a skull key except for the blue key. Yeah, I don't know if that was intentional. I'm sure it was. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway. <laughs> I guess it was a little weird to have skull keys in episode one. Especially if you're going for more of a tech-based theme. I think this is one of those things where it could use a little bit of work, but... Generally speaking... Oh, yeah, this should not have been gray on gray on gray on gray. And this should not have been Startan. Yeah, I think, just in general, I like this map. Could still use a little bit of tweaking, though. But let's go ahead and... Try to find that last imp. Wait, did I see you over there? No, that was a corpse. Don't hear anything. Hmm. Sneaky. There you are. Peekaboo! There we go. So there you go. See? Secret exit. Amazing. Yes, that one wasn't bad. And, uh, let's see. Then the last one, which was... Doesn't even have an exit. Is the E2M1, because I felt like making kind of a hellish level, and then I just didn't really go too far with it. A lot of this is not textured. Because... Yeah. Even I have better taste than this. Hit the switch, it opens up these side doors. Fancy red bar. I don't know why I put so much detail into that. Hmm. Yeah, here we go. So, outdoor area. A lot of brown walls. Yeah, I don't know. This looks maybe a little bit too generic. Of course, then again, this had like maybe a half hour's worth of work put into it, so um, probably not worth expecting too much out of it. Then, I don't believe this has been touched since then. Okay, there's two side traps here. Bottom area here. I think I was kind of planning on putting like pinkies and such in here. Something you could just rush the player quickly. And there's the exit, so short and sweet. So you can exit that. Neat. <laughs> oh my god, I almost got sub one minute on this unfinished map. Amazing. Yeah, good stuff. And then I kind of, because I used to do this so sporadically, like this has been, yeah, I don't know. But then I started working on a much bigger map more recently. Which has the working title... Hold on, let me type it. Slappy Me Silly. Don't look at me. It was, it, was, it was past me who named the file. But, yeah. This one... I would say kind of... Um, tries to do stuff that's a bit more... Oh, I don't know. Oh, I, oh, that's right. I do have a Map 1 music for this. But yeah, this one tries to be a bit more modern-ish. And uh, one of the main reasons I haven't finished this yet is because I really wanted to nail the combat on it. 
because this is a pretty large nonlinear map. And, um, yeah, not really something I want to mess up. So, whoa, that was a lot of... Wait, this is not the start room. <sighs> Hold, please. I'll say, yeah, Rise of the Triad Mini. Oh, God. This is already going poorly. Give me... Oh, whoa. What the hell is that? Okay, that's 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 nice. Um All right, anyway. <laughs> Hold please. Let me just go ahead and <laughs> I might as well just launch this through UDB. I don't even know if it'd be in my recent list. Uh no, I'll just edit this one real quick. Oh shoot, I didn't set it to MBF twenty one. That might cause problems when I save it. Maybe not, I don't know. MBF 21. Doesn't use too many MBF 21 features, but yeah. Alright, so player start is somewhere over here. Where it should be down. Oh, okay. I could have just deleted that. That's fine. Alright, there we go. <laughs> now there's going to be a duplicate. Oh no! Alright, let's try that again. So yeah, this was also me playing around with Otex a whole lot. Hey, what are you looking at? Hey, stop it! It hurts! Ah! Anyway. God. I don't know if I can do this with rot music. There we go. Okay. So, shoot that. Which gives you a whole bunch of shit. Oh yeah, it gives you basically... So I'm kind of intending this to be a Rush-style semi-slaughter map. So it basically gives you all the base level weapons. Pistol, both shotguns, chain gun, rocket launcher with a full set of ammo. Cell weapons are found later in the level. Still debating how I want to handle that. I might want to just hold off on the rocket launcher and just make the enemies kind of roll in later on. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, you take the teleporter. Kind of in this little dimly lit area. Ooh, caution tape. If you fall down, it's not hurt floor. And you can just lower the lift. I don't know why it's not making any noises. But uh, I'll figure that, that out later on. So this is the end path here. I have not done anything with the end arena yet. But as you can see, it requires all six keys. Oh yay, boom features. And there's two primary paths. There's the red path, the yellow path, and the blue path. Each of those paths have um, both the skull and key card variant of the key. So in here you have a kind of a lava area, which reminds me a whole lot. <laughs> you know, s s says the person who designed it. This actually kind of reminds me a lot of something that would be in like Heretic or Hexen. But you've got two switches that you hit on the outer ring, which... Uh, Unlock the center area. Isn't there also a shootable switch in here? Or did I scrap that idea? I guess I scrapped that idea. I was originally going to have like a... Uh, sh like some shootable switches or hidden switches that would allow you to unlock something else. Maybe I rethought that. I'm not sure. Basically hit this thing these lower slowly and these will take you to one of the key cards that you need so we're gonna go here first oh we're, const we're constrained so we got that these four platforms basically they have a little thing in the center which in theory should be able to push an enemy up through the floor like when you do this also, monster closets there. Press this switch, which that light should be zeroed, or should be different. I don't know. Anyway, little bug here and there. But this is a timed fight. You can actually see these are acting as timers. I think it takes about 45 seconds. So, so how's everyone's day going? <laughs> I'm doing pretty well. It's actually just um, 
played some Three as a Crowd before I started recording this. Map 5 was pretty awesome. And before that, I had a nice, uh, a, a nice nap. Yeah, feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty damn good. Right, I think we got maybe one more. Nope. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I thought that was kind of neat. It's kind of weird because I see a lot of timed fights and outside of stuff like the um, countdown in the final countdown series in, or section in Valiant or Lunatic, I guess. You don't really see that counted down all that often. It's kind of odd, I guess. So now you're on the other side of this, as you can see. Press that. Unlocks the door behind you. Press that. It unlocks the door behind you. Press that. It opens up the courtyard. With its black goo. Which does not hurt you. One of the MB... I think <laughs> this might be the only time I used it. But outside of here, there's like, essentially void. If you fall in there, it instantly kills you. So I don't know. Probably not the best use of MBF-21. Kind of thinking it's going to be one of those deals where I uh, just... When I do complete this, I'll probably just back it back down to MBF-9. Or, what am I talking about? Comp level 9. Boom. Because it's all it really needs. So... That's it. I'm not sure if I'm going to make this one a timed encounter or just put a lot of resistance after the player uh, presses that switch. But one of those two things are going to happen. Like I said, I really want to practice creating combat encounters before I really push forward with this too far. I do like what I've created on this, so I do plan on um, kind of continuing with it. So we've got the yellow area, which is supposed to be kind of like an illusion... illusion What's the best? Illusory. Yeah, it's supposed to be weird. So, it's supposed to make use of um, boom teleports. I mean, as you can see, this is not exactly possible in the base game. Oh, look, a secret area. Should I show it? Should I show it? Nah, not yet. So, you got this nice little path here that goes to this uh, very inconspicuous tower. It's very tall. You can also see the keys that are your objective. You've got the uh, skull key over there. You've got the key card over there. In this little moat, teleporters bring you back up here. Pretty simple. You can also see a megasphere over this way. Now let's go ahead inside of the tower, shall we? So you go up the stairs, it gets progressively darker as you near the top. Oh, look at that. Now we're in a completely different area that's much larger than the tower. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it came out pretty alright. Got a nice little fountain here with a little candelabra in the top, or however you pronounce that. So let's go over on this side first. Got these stairs that wrap around with a switch on top. So up we go. Alternating wood colors because I don't know. I thought it looked neat. Press that. And, uh... probably thinking, like, Archvile Trap in here. I mean, it kind of seems like a place where Archviles would live, right? Yeah. I can't be the only one. Then you go into the cave system. Behind the ritual altar thing. I actually forgot that I did the alternating rock colors, too. Hm. <laughs> nice. Kind of a large, expansive system. Bit of verticality here. Nothing too wild. And you've got this area here. Kind of a little grassy cave area. I should probably make it so that it kind of goes from, like, rock and then fades into grass. Like, put the grass up here and that's it. The plan for this area is to lock the player in and have a short combat encounter. It's a little scuffle, nothing too major. We go up here, and now you're actually climbing the rocks. So you climb to this section, go into the teleporter up here, and it brings you to a switch. Now this uh, symbol here is kind of meaningful. I'll actually show you that in just a moment. You have the nice little cracks, waterfall there, probably cacos and pain elementals coming out of there. Yeah. Now, we just go back this way. 
run up here. And there we go. It's open. And so is the uh, door. By the way, I should probably mention you are locked in here until you uh, press that final switch. But you can see that kind of corresponds with the panel that was near the switch. Let's just go this way. Oh yeah, this is where all the enemies are. I was just messing around with this. Wow. Okay, you know what? You deserve rockets. Okay. <laughs> How you like them apples? Hmm. Should probably make it so that when you wake up one group, it wakes up both of them. I'll play around with that. But yeah, does this look familiar? There's that megasphere. <laughs> there's the tower. But yeah, you can see like there's the other side that I haven't unlocked yet. So a few things corresponding. I actually like how this came out. I don't know about just the straight jaggies on the carpet. Maybe make that a little more chaotic. But, uh, I don't know. Just like the way that the, uh, metal contrasts with the floor. Not bad. It's kind of the first time, like, this map set... I actually originally did this with the Doom 2 texture set with a few custom textures that I just recolored. And, um, then I saw Otex just as part of that eternity. I think it was during Decino's playthrough of it. And, like, that looks pretty badass. Let's give that a shot. So I converted everything over. A few things that could probably use a bit of work, but, you know. So this is kind of like your traditional hell section. Oh, I should probably mention, in case it hasn't been obvious, there's a lot of skies being in or being used in this map. I don't think I... No, I didn't customize these areas yet. Well, I'll show this off as I get to them. But yeah, this is intended to be sort of the hell area. You have a few options. You can go down the main path where you're basically going to be bombarded on either side. Go on this path, which is like 5% hurt floor. Up to here. There's also the uh, bottom, which I think is 10%. Yeah, it is. And then you can just escape like that. And these stay down for a little while, just keep kind of keep you vulnerable. So you go into the cave, go into the uh, weird tech base type thing. Okay, it's just a lot of metal, what can I say? Hit the switch, and that's the blue switch. So now that I think about it, I didn't actually put the uh, the banner on this side. I probably should do that at some point. What am I talking about? I'm going to forget by the time I finish this video. Hee <laughs> hee. Alright, so I'm just on my way back. I don't know why I decided to do the checkerboard floor. I just think it looks neat. And this is supposed to be this weird mystical sort of tower. So, uh, yeah. Bit of a mishmash of visual styles, but I don't know. It's, it's like, I think it's reasonably cohesive given like the, uh, like each area kind of having more or less its own theme. Like this one being kind of like this arcane sort of thing. And, uh, like, the red area being, like, basically red fire brick. Then there's the blue area, which I spent the most time on. Oh, yeah, you can also see here. We've got the red and the blue bars. The blue bars have lowered. And now we're moving over to the red side. So when we hit this... Oh, that's right. That's one of the things I used, um, MBF21 for, which I don't think I can easily get away from. I think I made it so that this blocks, like, players, but not flying enemies. Yeah, it's not something you can do on, uh, other comp levels, unfortunately. Alright, so Megasphere acquired, and, uh, now we head around to the blue side, which is still slightly unfinished. It's, um, I got one wing of it finished up. But, uh, yeah, still somewhat of a work in progress. I'll actually be showing you the uh, the map I used to test my combat styles pretty soon. How did I do that? Hold on. Is there just like a... Oh, never mind. <laughs> I was overthinking things. So you have some boom deep water. I know, exciting. And a uh, little courtyard with a castle. Isn't that fancy? <laughs> 
So I don't really have... I need to do something with these moats. I haven't decided just yet. But we'll figure it out. But right now, if you fall in there, there's like there's no escape. So um, rip in peace and stuff. So when you go in here... Oh shoot, I hope I get these switches right. Um, what's going to happen is the door's going to slam shut and there's going to be uh, an ambush. Let me just do that because I want it to work right. So I, I was able to set it up so the door slams shut. And then this switch is basically what's going to happen when the uh, timed encounter ends. Door opens up again. And then this big door opens up with this big dining room. <laughs> So the plan is to have every single one of these seats, like have a low level enemy at every single one of these seats. Then of course cut it back based on the skill level. I really, really like how the dining room came out. It's like the black marble, probably going to be a Baron of Hell up here. I don't know, maybe even a Cyber Demon. I mean, realistically having a Cyber Demon shooting down at you when uh, you're killing all of his imps, his uh, loyal subjects would be kind of neat. We'll see. It is a pretty big throne, and I can always make it bigger if I needed to. Yeah, yeah, I think I'll do it like that. That, that sounds good. But anyway, food has to be prepped somewhere, right? Now this is a little weird. This actually I think looks a little bit better in OpenGL. But I use software, so uh, I don't know. It's serviceable. But pretty much you can see the, uh, the trays with the plates on it. You can see the giblets on the counter. Various, well, can't really see it from there, but various forms of soup. Yeah, this is this is where they get their meat from. And uh, here's the various soups. <laughs> yeah, it's tasty. Then in here, you've got your nice little um, meat storage locker with a blue key in it, because why not? These open up. I'm thinking like arch vials, paint elementals, something like that from here, and then maybe revenants from the sides. But you are locked in here until you... Hit both of these keys. Or not these keys, these switches. And then you can get the hell out. Good stuff. So now we have the last part, which is over yonder. And this is going to be like the dungeon. This is, uh, as you can probably tell, not this is the area that's not finished. So, um, yeah. <laughs> little bit raw in the texturing department. These are going to be, well, these are prison cells, more or less. Doom cute toilet with some very questionable looking water. Really crappy looking bed. Maybe a toilet's too much. Maybe I should just downgrade them to something else. Like, I don't know. Some sort of cesspit. I have no idea. So, now you have this room here. Which, um... Yeah, so it's basically like more or less like a 5x5 uh, five five grid with these little uh, pluses in the middle. The idea is you grab the key, this door shuts, and you've got to deal with some arch files. So yeah, um, should be exciting for all involved. But obviously that's not finished yet. Because that's when I realized, hey, I'm not going to get anywhere until I actually get good at uh, making combat. So, um... Yeah, that's where we stand right now. So that's definitely been the longest one so far. So now we just have to go back to the rest of the map and... Um, yeah, look at that. It's right there. How convenient. And then just open up the all keys door. Oh no! A doom texture! <sighs> wow, that was a long one. So that was slapping me silly. Also, another thing, too, is there's actually cages in there. You can kind of go in here. Yeah, there we go. At some point, when you play through the level, it's going to open these up, and there's going to be arch files inside. So, should be exciting. Right so. Now, there is uh, one... Th oh, jeez, that is just so much error spam. I don't even know what's going on there. <laughs> Any hoot. The blue area was originally... I wonder if I still have a backup of that. Let me, um... I'll just kind of ramble while I go through my Dropbox. But originally in the uh, blue key area, I was going to have a... Uh, more or less a tribute to Super Hexagon. Because I had just gotten... like 
as I was making this map, like the base part of it, I just ended up redeveloping or rekindling my obsession with that game. However, it really, really did not work out. So I just scrapped it all like hours of work because it just would not have been fun to play like at all. Let's see. Do I have the... Oh, pre-simplification. That might be it. And actually, this might be... Uh, this version might be before I converted everything to Otex. Oh, old blue area. There we go. Found it. All right. So, um, slappy me silly dot old blue area. There we go. I don't really know why I just put in rot music because I had no intention of keeping it like that. Yeah, and you can actually see Doom 2 textures. I don't know. I think Otex serves it better overall. But anyway, let's go over this away. So this was originally the blue key area. You could see it was very blue. Go into the teleporter. And it was just like a whole bunch of recolored whatchamafudgets. Doom textures. And I think th there were a lot of problems with this. Like one of the problems being that you couldn't really tell what was going on until you looked at the map. And then you, even then you couldn't really tell what was going on. It was just, I don't know. It's not fun to navigate. I figure I don't want to have a level where the player has to basically be playing the game like this. Not to mention, even if you do play it like this, it's still really awkward and confusing because uh, it's hard to tell what's a wall and what's an actual, um, like, walkway. Yes, I don't know. Plus, another reason that was kind of, that I kind of... I wonder if this one's going to have that issue. I actually ran into a problem with an oversized block map, and it caused a lot of collision issues. Okay, this must be after I fixed that. That's actually part of the reason it took me so long to um, to finish up this section, because I was dealing with those issues. But yeah, there were also... Oh yeah, the key cards were also hidden in this maze. Yeah. Like, the switches are pretty easy to spot, but... Mm, I think the other one's up here? Is there anything in here? No. So yeah, I don't know kind of a weak a uh, weak throwback to another random game that I'm thinking a decreasing number of people have been playing and uh, yeah just overall just doesn't really make for a very fun experience in my humble opinion I'm sure some people would have probably liked it but um I don't know we call those people masochists nah but seriously I didn't enjoy it, and um, I don't see much of a reason in making and releasing maps that I don't enjoy playing. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's that. But this actually would have dropped you back off at the beginning, and everything would have been great. So, you know, I might as well just do a quick run through and just kind of show you what it used to look like. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. The red key area, I, th I think, still more or less holds up. Because, I mean, it's got, like, a lot of serious Doom 2 vibes. But, yeah. Some of the textures, I do think, like, upon kind of going through it again, I think can kind of use um, a bit of a refresh. I'm referring to the Yotex version when I say that. Yeah, like, I think this room looks fine. Fire blue. I might actually bring the fire blue back. This one, I... Yeah, again, just something I recolored. Let's just go ahead and skip. Hello? There we go. Wow. Phenomenal cosmic powers. I think this is when the map was still 100% boom as well. But yeah, like, this area here... Eh... With the Doom textures, it definitely would have needed a bit of a refresh. This being blue water didn't really feel right, I guess. 
Oh, yeah, you can kind of see the sky, like I mentioned, how it's like... <sighs> Although, Otex adds a lot of skies, too, so, um... Oh, man, does it have that really crappy sky that I did for, uh, the yellow key area? <laughs> oh, I hope it does. Man, I hope it does. So, yeah, this just uses, like, stucco. I end up having to modify the texture somewhat, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. So, um, this guy was, uh, literally just the clouds filter in Photoshop. <laughs> and then, of course, you reduce it to 256 colors in the Doom palette, and then it just looks like that. Yeah, see, that's the thing. It's like, this area just looks too much like a Doom 2 map, I think. I don't know. This area, I think, in, in particular, ended up benefiting heavily from, uh, from moving to Otex. Oh, more fire blue. I think I'll bring back the fire blue and the uh, the red area. Maybe not the other ones. I mean, these, some of these parts don't look bad, but yeah, I don't know. Ooh, this was so much darker before. My goodness. So apparently, I adjusted the lighting somewhat as well. Yeah, it's, I just I just don't like the way this looks. I just think in some areas like this, just. Like, this area looks a lot richer with Otex. I don't know. Personal preference. It does inflate the size of the wad pretty heavily, though. Of course, I'm sure if I strip down the textures that I don't really... that I'm not using, that'll probably help quite a bit. Yeah, glad I tweaked the light levels. That would have been just... painful to play through. I should probably mention, too... I did set this up so that if uh, there's a co-op teleporter right here. So if the player ends up going into there and uh, the second player gets left behind, they can always get in. All right, so what about this one? Jeez, what did I use for the um, checkerboard floor? Oh, that's not bad. Okay. Still, again, yeah, see, this area, I think, actually, parts of it look better with the original textures. So, I don't know. I'll have to reevaluate some parts of this. Oh, yeah, this is me doing a crappy recoloring. This room doesn't look good. <laughs> Man, this is kind of fun looking back at this. Sort of. I don't know. I don't know. I think what I'll have to do is uh, when I actually work on that next. Excuse me. I'll just have to uh, kind of evaluate what worked in this version, what worked in the newer version. Kind of combine the two. Yeah, and this is before I added an enemy encounter there. I wonder if I could skip the trigger. Because there is a... Uh... I don't know if I can see it. It's, it's moving me. You can kind of perceive the... Uh... Little teleport effect somewhat yeah nope oh well whatever i tried to set up the lines so that they'd be as hard to skip as possible oh yeah i never actually aligned this section Ooh, yeah the red and blue texture i used in this one because i think this is just one of my crappy recolors definitely doesn't look as good Kind of thinking I might do something else for that instead. I'm not sure. Oh, is this the version where it was possible to uh, skip out of this area? I'm pretty sure it is. I don't think you can do it when the thing was completely lowered, though. Well, you've pretty much seen all there is to see in this uh, part of the map, so... Um... Nope, yeah, whatever. All right, so that was the uh, <laughs> the old blue area with the pre-OTX or OTEX textures. Good stuff. There were also a few areas that I did have to simplify just because of the block map area. Which, oh, you know what? I, this is my ADD brain at work. So, um, pre-simplification. I think, holy crap, what is going on? Um, 
DSDA, uh, you all right, mate? <laughs> I don't think you are. What the hell is that? All right, well, it seemed like it was trying to launch. I hit control C just to try to stop, well, this. Man, I don't know what the thing's doing, but it's wild. Uh, sure, why not? So, okay, I, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Okay, there we go. So if I, if this is the correct one, Let's do an IDDT. Nope. Just go around here and uh, if this is the one I'm thinking it is, if I go too far out, no, not that way. What the hell? All right, it clip. <laughs> see, like it got to the point where this was painful to even test, so I just yeah, there we go. See how close I am to the wall. Basically, collisions just completely freaking. Well, okay, projectile collisions fine, but the block map is toast. You're toast out this far. So yeah, um, pretty much if you're trying to actually shoot enemies using like the shotgun, it wouldn't work. Now you can see if you get a little bit closer in, like right here, it's fine. It's just like right about. Here. Whoa. Come on, where is it? Right. Yeah, right there. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? And you do kind of get stuck too, which uh, is kind of an added bonus. But before the level was uh, itself was much more spread out, so I ended up just completely slamming into the block map size limitations. Yeah, like you'd see um, this version. I don't know if you're paying attention to the previous one, but um, it's a lot more spread out. Was this also when I had the old version of the caves? I think it is, yeah. You could see the caves were a lot different before too. <laughs> All right, let's just head over there real quick. This is gonna be a long video, isn't it? Yeah, we're already in over an hour into it. So um, before, it wasn't just like a quick loop around. Before you'd go in here, I mean, this is a bit oversized. I, I was going to trim this down even then. Just this one? Okay. Seems to build the block map from the left to the right. So, um, this area is fine. But yeah, you were just going to basically traverse this area. This large, large area. And I was kind of envisioning multiple um, little arena fights that you'd have to go through. Before you finally ended up running into some slime trails because the node builder is not liking this at all. <laughs> but yeah, before you finally ended up here. So yeah, I, I think it's kind of working out. Oh yeah, this was also really tight. So I would always have problems like just, yeah, just navigating into it. So yeah, the evolution of maps. Anyway, uh, what's the next one? All oh, right. Wet. This is my combat test. Now, did I put music into this? I don't know. I did not. So, uh, we're getting, we're getting music. So you're actually going to be getting some gameplay here. It's incredible. This one's not finished. It's more or less just a random thing that I'm putting together just to test, well, combat. So, let's go. And that's not the right starting area. God damn it. Oh, uh, it just keeps happening. It just keeps happening. All right, where's Doom Builder? Fortunately, I know where the start location's supposed to be. I just need to drag it over there. Uh, it's right there. Perfect. Okay, so um, <laughs> you got a plasma rifle on a pedestal, which already is a bad omen, isn't it? You don't start out with the, the super shotgun. So you grab this, walls lower, just basically push your way out with the plasma, grab the super shoddy, and then circle strafe. 
basically just uh, prioritizing hit scanners more or less as enemies teleport in. I think there's a hundred enemies in this first fight. I don't think I have any difficulty level support with this because this was literally just intended to test, well, combat encounters. But there are two switches on the uh, the walls. Ow, stop it. Seriously? Stop it. <laughs> but yeah, basically combat and uh, item and weapon balance. By that I mean, you know, pickups and what have you. Because that's the thing that's kind of important to note is, uh, especially in situations like this, where you have uh, enemies that drop weapons, if I were to give the player more shells, they'd probably have an excessive number of them. So, yeah. A lot of things to kind of take into account, and I didn't want to use something as big as uh, Slappy Me Silly to do it. They were just kind of... Uh, I just like one of those names where I thought, okay, I'm the only person who's going to see this. Yeah, not so much. Not so much. Okay, so yeah, 100 enemies on, on the dot. Alright, so we got rocket launcher there. Blue armor there. Had a bit of urgency to the encounter. die because of a really stupid reason. <laughs> oh, face rocket. Gotta love it. Yeah. This just really kind of, um... It's just kind of amazing when you look at how much chaos a couple arch files can cause, can introduce to a fight. Not to mention that, uh... If you lead them around correctly and they start resurrecting things, how quickly you can disable them. That being said, I did have four arch files in that area at one point, and that did not work very well. Alright, so now for the spicy fight. This is where you get into the base, and again, using Otex. And this is more or less just showing your hand. And uh, this is where things get kind of spicy. Is great. Yep, now everything's in the center. It's amazing. <laughs> Hit scanner hell right here. And the best part about this is it's been long enough since I've messed with this encounter that I don't remember. I remember some bits of it. Like, we're gonna have specters to deal with. There's a lot of infighting. Yeah, there we go. There's a lot of infighting in the center. Yeah, it's, uh, it kind of becomes a mess very quickly. Oh boy, especially when they start finding their way back up here. When you start focusing on the freaking specters. Because the other thing too is that there's also specters down below. So, uh, yeah, you can very easily get pincered in this section. Thankfully, in this case, the, uh, Hell Knights and Revenants kind of got distracted fighting each other, so, um... It didn't go as poorly as it normally does. Oh boy! There's also ammo over there if you want to take a risk for it. This is probably the first really good opportunity to use the rocket launcher at, for its intended purpose as I almost face rocket to a ridiculous degree on specters. To be perfectly honest, that's the main reason I use specters is just to basically encourage face rockets. You know, face rockets require encouragement, as we all know. Okay. Easy peasy. I gotta say, this music does work with this. Good job, Wadnator. You are clearly top DJ. Yeah, this is one of those cases. The upcoming fight here is where the rocket launcher again becomes your best friend. Alright, we'll just use this, why not? Save some super shoddy shots. Yeah, so what a bloodbath, eh? And uh, you might be thinking, okay, well, that was a lot of infighting. I mean, you didn't really have to do too much in the center part because they took care of themselves. Well, 
first of all, there's that. Whee! So, hit the switch here. And it eats out some health and armor for you. And uh, some arch files. There's also Manx on the upper ledge, so... Um, be careful. <laughs> I should probably also mention that... Uh, Yeah, so it's, uh, there's three arch files down there right now. There used to be, oh no, there's four. There's four. I never nerfed that. Ooh, I thought I was dead there. Yeah, used a lot of rockets there. <laughs> a lot, a lot of rockets. Jeez, oh man. I should probably mention that I was in, like, Kind of on a huge uh, skill saw kick when uh, I designed most of the fights on this. I think I might have went too far for this one with the Manx. Oh, wow, that that fireball went places. Okay. I don't know if this is before or after. I think no. You know what? This is after I played part of Sunlust. Actually. Did not go too badly, all things considered. And then eventually, I think after you hit that switch, this opens. So realistically, you could just make a break for it. Get kind of nudged down there, and uh, we. <laughs> there are some uh, specters in here, as per usual. It was another thing I was messing around with was the uh, appropriate light level for introducing specters. Oh, you heard that, didn't you? <laughs> I think I forgot to save. Oh well. Also experimenting with uh, successfully getting meatballs to uh, stay behind the cacos. Turns out not as hard as uh, I was expecting. In fact, it's actually quite intuitive doing that. But pretty much with this one, it's like you just have to get control of the fight keep everything in the center, and then just blast them down with rockets. But of course with the uh, pain elementals, if you aren't paying close enough attention, they can make things a lot worse. So, um, yeah. Actually, I think there were more pain elementals the uh, in the first iteration of this, because there were four total. I want to say bef in the first version of this, I had eight, which would have been fun. Maybe a few too many cacos. I don't know. I mean, this is kind of like borderline slaughtery. I mean, you have basically a 10 minute map with 524 enemies. <laughs> Map's not done either. I haven't done like the grand, the grand encounter. That's kind of what I'm more or less leading up to is what happens after you give the player the BFG. Here's something alive. Oh, it's in the monster closets. Okay. Whew. Okay. This is an interesting encounter. Originally, it was just cyber demons, but... Oh, I didn't show that off. Okay. So, pretty much, you hit the switch. You see an invuln. And then you see it teleport away. <laughs> Guess what you gotta do now? Oh, look. There's enemies teleporting in. Who would've thunk it? All right. Charge! <laughs> Basically, this is one of those fights that gradually... Oh, there you are. Oh yeah, that's right. More of these guys show up. Oh boy. Yeah, so things gradually just kind of get worse. Okay, I was going to say, where's the skeletons? There's the skeletons. I guess I should have saved the invuln for a little, little bit of time. Oh, you bastard. I don't know why they're... Oh boy. 
That's, uh... I don't think that's ever happened. <laughs> that's gonna be a problem. Especially with these guys incoming. Goddamn skeletons. Or part of a skeleton. Oh shoot, there's arch files. I forgot about that. How did I forget about that? So this is basically just an example of how bad things can get. <laughs> Alright, so, um... Forgot how my own fight worked. It's terrible. Alright, we'll save those. I'm gonna save the invuln. I don't really need it yet. Maybe that was the idea. It was meant to just kind of show you what you could have and the nice things that you'll probably need at some point. As well as give you an opportunity to kind of deal with this shit. This absolute garbage. So you're more or less fighting just a two-front battle. It's, it's great. And pretty much when the Archfile Flames end up... Or maybe right now. That works. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna go with right now. You can see those things are uh, zooming. They will eventually... Oh, that's a lot of Archfiles. Holy shit. Eh. Man, these guys can just, like, eat you down the hallway. Ooh. It's funny when you have that degree of time separation between, uh... Like... I don't know. Between playthroughs. And just, like, the little things you forget. Like, um... Just how many arch files you put into section A, B, C, D, or E. Okay. Oh, one enemy left. Is he out of here? Man, this music really is appropriate. Alright, give me all, give me all your stuff. Yep. I don't know what he's getting stuck on, but... Oh, piss off. Alright, that's it. Oh, man. <laughs> that was something. See, I could see that being a little bit nasty. Um, I don't know if I'd go so far as to call it, like, sunlust nasty, because most of the opposition's coming from one side, but, um... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Not horrible. Not horrible. And then I just decided to do this, just for funsies. So, um, this is the facility you're in, I guess. And, uh, yeah, of all things, the uh, slime mixing into the water was inspired by Habitat. So, uh... That map is good for something. Yeah, not too shabby. So I don't know. I don't know when I'm going to complete this. I had a few other projects that kind of took center stage, like the one I'm going to show you next. So, I've mentioned this a few times, but um, I ended up working on the Doom GPT project. If you're unaware, that uh, project essentially involves... Oh, jeez, Steam, why are you... Why are you... Oh, jeez. <laughs> hate when Steam needs to update because you have that stupid incessant taskbar pulsating. Anyway, I digest. So, um, Doom GPT, the whole idea of that is that you go to chat GPT, you say, please write me a walkthrough of, uh, Doom 2 map 20, gotcha. And then the chat GPT thingy writes you a walkthrough that has absolutely nothing in common with the original map. It's pretty amazing. So, um, I joined that project because, why? I mean, seriously. And, uh, yeah, I have a map that I submitted to it. Now, um, if you want to wait for the actual project to come out, I would suggest stopping the video here, because there will be spoilers kind of coming up if um, you really want to catch that when it comes out. But if you don't care, if you just want to see what, uh, what I've got, then um, please continue, shall we? But anyway, for the people that are still, or for the people that are leaving, thank you for watching and uh, see you in the next one. You know, all that good stuff. Have a great rest of your day. Now for the people who want to see this, let's go and uh, 
see it, shall we? Kind of feels appropriate to use this the stock music for it. Uh, skill four, comp level two, warp 20. So um, this is how it described the start room. <laughs> Basically, staircase with uh, some sort of enemy down in front of it. So yeah, a few items here just to, I don't know. Make it more Doom-like, I guess. There <laughs> are a lot of stairs in this map. It was kind of vague when it came to the actual enemy encounters, so um, it was more or less, oh, you might find, and then it basically listed off every type of enemy in Doom. So, yeah. Nothing too wild there. It was pretty, uh, it was pretty insistent on this chain gun being here, though. So, alright. Now we go up some more stairs. Ooh, pretty lights. And then this room. So there's three paths you can take. And, um, more or less, this one is generally going to be the easiest. This one's going to be kind of middle, and this one's going to be, like, a little bit harder than that. So let's go this one. And up we go. Oh no, what is going on? Well, what's the worst that can happen, right? Whee! So now we're actually in the middle path again. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they converge pretty, uh, pretty swiftly. I would say this level is probably a little tougher than uh, a stock Doom 2 level. It used to be so, so much worse. Like, this is why you... <laughs> This is why you really need to have other people test your levels, because, uh, the first iteration of this, like, was, probably wouldn't have been, oh, I don't know, it, it probably wouldn't have been unwelcome in, like, early Sunlust. It was rough. <laughs> then just shoot you, perfect, now we've got somewhere else to run. Yeah, there we go. Uh, rocket launcher. So that one. So we've got a couple options now. We could either grab the r the blue key up there, or we can duck down into the tunnels using the secret, or just go back. You know, it's, that's an option too. I think I kind of want to just make this hard on myself. Yeah, you know, don't need any of those super weapons aside from the super shotgun. That's. I mean, super's in the name, right? Good god. And this is the main reason why this is the uh, tougher path. Uh. There we go. And, uh... There we go. Amazing! We already killed 42 things. Yeah, we don't want to go up there just yet. And the map did insist on having a little thing over there that you can overlook the battlefield. I don't know. Chat GT. GPT is a little weird. So there we go. Perfect. Uh, do I want to do I want to operate the easy way or the hard way? Let's do it the hard way. Why not? That is to say, doing this before we get any uh, decent weapons means infighting. Ahoy! Ugh. When you start falling, you can't stop falling. Yeah, good stuff. Alright. You know, actually, I actually think ammo is going to be a bigger problem with this this particular route. Fortunately, this is also bringing us to a, a section where we can kind of save ammo, so there's that. Hmm. Yeah, let's just let's just cut out early and go back, go down here. 
Yeah, I'm grabbing the light amp. What what of it? Hey, meatball. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so this is basically the left path down here. It's um, a bit more under control than <laughs> the other one. But I mean, aside from the blue key fight itself, the other fight is perfectly... Well, okay, maybe that would have been viable with... Um, bit more ammo conservation and uh, infighting. Yeah, that might have worked. I don't know. Oh, that one's really awkward to grab. You know, I got a bug report about that. I think it was that particular clip. And that seems to be one where it's either really easy to pick up or really hard to pick up. Alright, I got a score to settle. So, I don't know. I think I'll move it a little bit closer to the ledge. Make it a little bit easier to grab. Wow, I like how that Spectre just was totally like dove in front of that Arachnatron. I wouldn't have done the same. And just to be perfectly clear, I said would not have done the same. Just so there's no misunderstanding. Alright, so let's go back down here. Alright, I'm going to disable the light amp so you can see what this room's supposed to look like. Yeah, it's supposed to be kind of dark. <laughs> with uh, little environmental areas like this, because it's supposed to be an area filled with broken machinery, and I figure that's close enough. And this light over here that just kind of half works. Alright, so now for the crate maze. Could probably use a bit more detail. I don't know how I forgot about the ambush dude. But I did, so. Oops. Yeah. Easy peasy. Slightly breezy. Okay. Final few enemies. Okay, there we go. Now, another reason why this is the easier path is because, uh, well, it has a few weapons. It's pretty helpful. So, let's go down here and grab the backpack. Debating on whether I should have made that, should have made that backpack a secret. I don't know. It seems a little too obvious to me. I tend to prefer older achievement systems where, uh, I don't know, it felt like you actually had to do something and not just start the game. Right, so down here. Oh, snap! Yeah, and the chat GPT, from what I recall, basically said that every weapon in the game should be down here. So, um, that's what I did. Alright. Ooh, that took a few seconds. Yeah, so a lot happens up there. <laughs> so it's probably in your best interest to jump down. <laughs> Just uh, throwing that out there. But realistically, if you're maxing, you probably don't need to go back up there in a meaningful way. But I mean, or if you're not maxing, I should say. Ooh, that area's a little bit open. Revs can definitely wreck you there. But yeah, there's options. Including using the BFG once or twice. Ugh. Okay. Ah, uh, super shotgun kicks ass as always. Although I think in this case, I could probably get better DPS if I just use this. So, that's what I'm going to do. Now, that is one thing, and I did get a report about this as well, that one Arachnatron being, well, getting stuck. I don't know. I am think I might just have to surround this box with monster blocking line defs, because I definitely saw it happen this time, but then again, I, I did shoot at him early, which might have knocked him slightly off kilter. I don't know. It doesn't happen every time, but I've had it happen like once or twice. Oh yeah, this area also opens. Because um, this room here is supposed to connect to the upper room. And uh, 
I mean, if we look at the map, that's really the only way I could have done it. Because <laughs> this room's in the way. I could have probably did some 3D bridge shenanigans, but that, uh, uh, yeah, that rarely works out as well as you'd like it to. Uh, stairs plus rockets equals sad. Yeah, there's revenants inside, by the way. No. <laughs> bad. You're bad. You're worse. Cool. Now for the end room. Yeah, have fun. This is definitely a bit harder than Stock Doom. Although you can definitely get the jump on one of the vials. Ooh, unlucky. Thankfully, that's all there is. I mean, no, it's not all there is, but those are the only vials that are here. You also get these guys, because um, this does use the timed monster closet to ensure that the pain elementals are going to be in a little bit later. Yeah. Also, see revenants. So pretty much if you want to try to cheese the room by... Um, just sort of running outside. You do have to poke your head in once in a while or just open the door periodically. Are there any other pain elementals? No, I got them all. Cool. So yeah, it's one of those things where I tried to sort of reward players for knowing the mechanics while also trying to deliver a somewhat engaging fight if you... Um, Either didn't want to mess with that. Because I enjoy this fight. <laughs> Again, this is like way, way harder than uh, than it is now in its original form. So, yeah. Like, just to kind of give you an idea, I'm pretty sure Ultraviolence originally had like 270 enemies. Which is just stupid. I mean, in hindsight. It felt perfectly fine for me originally, and I didn't have any problems beating it, but then I, like, basically gave it to someone to test Hurt Me Plenty, and then, uh, poor guy, <laughs> he, uh, he's fairly new at Doom. Like, he's experienced the first-person shooters, but he hasn't really played classic Doom. And what's that, what's the, what's the missing enemy? Oh, God, I'm gonna have to go through the level, aren't I? Hopefully something just... It's just wandering and didn't just fail to teleport in. But, yeah. So he starts playing it, gets an experience that's harder than, st like, stock ultraviolence. Yeah, it was grossly overtuned originally. You know, I think that something may have failed to teleport in, which, given the way I designed my teleport closets, doesn't seem likely. I wonder if they just wandered back here? Hmm. Yay, we're beta testing, kinda. I guess. Oh, that's right. Ha, <laughs> forgot about that guy. And apparently I didn't walk far enough forward for him to wake up. So, um, all right. No, no issues. I just never went to that route because I went through the secret le secret thingy, my bopper. Okay, well, that was the map. Yay. Doom GPT. And, uh, does this look familiar? Yeah, I had to do it. Yeah, so that was my D Doom GPT tra transmission. Yeah, exactly. That was my Doom GPT submission. I don't know. I like how it came out. Um, people who tested it seem to like it as well. Which, uh, that's always the thing that I get a bit anxious over. Never like to be in that situation where you make something that you think is going to be just so incredible and then uh, it just ends up landing like a wet fart. Now, there was another map that I ended up making, which was essentially a from memory remake of Doom 2's um, Blood Falls, map 25. I'll just go ahead and link to that video because um, honestly, I, I spent, spent a lot of time on that, including on the analysis and comparison between my version the Doom 2, the way we remember it version, as well as the original. And, um, 
I just didn't think I'd be able to really do it justice again in this video. So a uh, link to that will be in the card in the upper right. It's probably gone by now. Maybe I'll put it in the description as well. Who knows? But anyway, I think that's all for now. Um, I'm going to put a few of these up for download. Not all of them. Like Slappy Me Silly, that'd be a little premature. Wet would be premature. But um, I think most of the rest of the ones, I'll, I'll go ahead and just share them. Just that way you can have them on your computer and point and laugh at them once in a while. But for now, that's all. Two long D-zones this week. Crazy. But anyway, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. This uh, has been quite a D-zoned week, hasn't it? But uh, yeah, maybe get to something a little bit more typical next week. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, <laughs> thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.